Hey guys, two reviews today. Uh, first up is Baby Driver. Now, Edgar Wright, as far as I'm concerned, hasn't made a bad movie, and Baby Driver continues that trend. So, Baby Driver is basically about this young, early 20s male getaway driver named Baby, played by Ansel Elgott, who, you know, is working for this boss played by Kevin Spacey and you know he's like doing these heists for money as the getaway driver and he's like had enough after meeting this uh, waitress girl played by Lily James and he wants all out but then he's taken back into doing one more heist with uh, Kevin Spacey and it all goes wrong basically so it's a very well made film, I can't fault Edgar Wright's direction in it, it's very well shot, fast paced, stylish, there's a lot of really good one shot takes in it, he just knows how to make these films not boring basically, and I wasn't bored for one second while watching Baby Driver. The car chase action sequences are really good, uh, the Edgar Wright humour is in there a bit, uh, the Cast is fantastic, can't really fault it. You got John Hamm, Jamie Foxx, uh, El Elsa Gonzalez, is that her name? Yep. And yeah, I really enjoyed Baby Driver, although saying that, it's probably my least favourite Edgar Wright movie. Can't believe I'm saying that, but that just proves how talented the man is. And yeah, I suppose if there's a few faults with it, it's it's not really predictable I'd say that it goes a bit out of left field in parts and there are a few parts where you're like oh really it's a bit a uh, bit cliche don't you think and there's parts like that but I, I don't know if it's intentional or not so it didn't really bother me either way and like I said uh, the music is fantastic the, the gimmick of this movie is that baby has to listen to like iPod or radio music constantly to get in the rhythm of doing these like car chases or sequences in the film and it's really well done. It's, I can't really think of any errors in it and I've got to give it to Edgar Wright, he has made a well made film. However, it's personally not my favourite of his and I'm giving Baby Driver a 7.5 out of 10. Next up is the Despicable Me 3. So who doesn't love the Minions, huh? They're all over the world now. Well, Despicable Me 3 was perfectly watchable. It wasn't like bad, but I wouldn't quite call it good. So the plot is basically about Gru, played by Steve Carell, meeting his long lost brother Drew, also played by Steve Carell, and they work together to stop this 80s music loving teen star played by Trey Parker from South Park who grows up to be a villain and there's these subplots with Gru's wife and his kids. Uh, now I got confused here because I hadn't seen Despicable Me 2 so I didn't know Gru had a wife at this point so that initially confused me but it clicked. And yeah it, it was just it was just average really. Like the funniest scenes for me were when Trey Parker and the Minions showed up. Like the Minions are hardly in it to be honest. They have one good scene in the prison which probably got the most laughs out of me. And Trey Parker got a few chuckles and laughs out of me. But he's not in it for a large portion of the middle part of the film. So yeah, it when it focuses back on Gru and Drew and you know, the mum and the kids, it, it just it just wasn't clicking for me, the, the jokes weren't hitting, it felt a bit padded out to be honest, like the subplots don't really go anywhere, like uh, Gru's wife Lucy wants to be a good mother and one of the kids wants to find a real life unicorn and it, that they just happen and then just end, like there was no reason for them to exist, I felt very padded in. So yeah, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I actually uh, miss the minions, the rest of the plot is fairly predictable, you know, but it wasn't really like unwatchable or bad or anything, I could sit through it easily. Heck, I, I was defending Minions over Inside Out back in the day and people called me crazy, but I really did not like Inside Out and the Despicable Me movies have just been, you know, perfectly watchable. I'd say the first one is genuinely good and 
yeah, they're probably Illuminations' uh, best uh, movies, although that's really not saying that much. So yeah, it was perfectly watchable, you know, there's a few little laughs and chuckles here and there, but I wouldn't quite call it a good movie, so I'm giving Despicable Me 3 a 6 out of 10. Before you get the best of it.